So these are the, the paradigms of plant nutrition. You may have heard a few of these. How do plants actually feed? Well, in the hydrogen cycle, they're taking sunlight in the energy from the light as well as CO2 in water. And, and that's sort of a, a feeding, but it's really photosynthesis facilitates them facilitating all the other processes of nutrition and, you know, gives us our oxygen. So we like it. Right. Um, but it's, it's pretty interesting when you get down to the energetic side of it, because you see, wait a second, the protons, the H plus are having an effect where they're reducing the soil, but they're also making these cations available. And then if you look at what the opposite of what that is, oxidizing, remember we said loss of energy, oxidization, right? Uh, oxidation, excuse me. Um, plants require four H2O molecules for every nitrate molecule they observe. Plants require more water when nitrates are applied or when any fertilizer is added to uh, that is oxidized or alkaline. And so if your soils are like that, they'll transfer that. If you're preparing something in an oxidized way, like hot compost, fresh hot compost is going to be oxidized because you've got a lot of aerobic oxygen in there. The heat release is literally the liberation of energy. That's why we light a match and it's hot and it's fire. So keep all that in mind as we dive deeper. I'm not going to get into all this. I mean, this is the whole week or two of conversation on just that energetic side. But, but this is what I wanted you to see. As it brings down that energy, it's actually putting that onto the clay and organic matter particles in exchange. It's kind of like forced exchange uh, to displace the other, the, the cations, the other nutrients um, that are just not already soluble. These are, these, these are released. This is actually the, the pathway that chemical ag has been using the whole time. They use ions, um, cations and anions. They, they, they deliver them in salts, which is chemistry word for salt, which is chemistry definition of salt, which means any of those two things that are in a stable compound that is soluble in water. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is why there's a lot of like confusion around this. So there's, 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 and again, I'll get, in, there's other, other videos on that, but that's one of the ways that it feeds energetically through exchange, through the energy it brings down. But then you probably heard about the soil food web. That's probably why you're here. Uh, many of us are here because of uh, Elaine's great work. This is an extension of our work. This has many more arrows than you've probably seen in some of the other soil food web uh, maps out there. This is the most extensive and informative, and it took a long time to vet every arrow right there <laughs> is referenced. So uh, this is this is the process by which uh, you know the soil food web traditionally was taught as the way the nutrition gets gets cycled. The bacteria and fungi they embody it. And the protozoa release it. Nematodes release more of that because they feed on protozoa and bacteria and fungi. And protozoa and nematodes have waste. They have manure. They excrete things. Fungi and bacteria will release things, but they're doing stuff with it. They, they, they've got a mission. They've got, they've got a, a prerogative. Um, and so they're, they're, they're releasing it because they want to trigger things in the plant. They're, they've, got, they've got certain things they're doing. So this is traditional, right? This is not the main reason to do compost teas or compost extracts or compost, okay? For real though, you'll see. It, it's, it's pretty wild. Um, more people want in. This is wonderful. Thank you all for being here. This is also the way that organic matter accumulates because as you know, the exudates, the cakes and cookies come down, they, that's traditionally what Dr. Lane Ingham would say. Um, they, they would, they would combine with the H pluses, the protons, which are acidifying. So that creates humic acids, right? So it combines with the carbons, the sugars that are coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get it. Um, and, and, and all these other things are also participating in that, but I just wanted you to keep that in your mind. So rhizobium. You've probably heard of rhizobium. These are not the profiles, guys. 
These are not the profile. I'm just introducing these things as ideas. We'll get to the profiles. We'll go so much deeper. So just, <laughs> just know that these are not, um, these are not um, the profiles. Brady rhizobia, mycorrhizal fungi. You can see mycorrhizal fungi working its way between the cell walls and outlining the cell walls for us. And some of them they've entered. And this is why I think the buscular idea when have you seen, I mean, there's lobular fun, fungal growth, right? But th this this seems much more fine. It, much, it seems much more hyphal, um, which is what it looks like when it, when it has external hyphae. So uh, I think that, and I'll talk about this in my book, you know, um, th there, there is evidence that the destructive ways in which we characterize our buscular mycorrhizal fungi to create the arbusculus is actually represents nubs of what actually should be there. But because we caustically attacked it to create the image, we burned it down to just that our buscule. And it actually was much larger and it could be lobular. It could be, could be just so fine like this where it goes brighter and brighter. And then it just is so integrated. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. All right. So <clears throat> This is another uh, perspective. Notice how um, the transport of phosphorus um, is 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 part of what's lighting things up. This is a manual lighting technique of a root. Um, I uh, this is my technique. <laughs> you can see that there is fungal hyphae all over the root, right? Um, this is without epifluorescence. So you can do this without epifluorescence. The epifluorescence allows us to see um, the fungi grow, glow and the phosphorescence. But there are many ways to view these things as, as I show and cover in my new book. I'm so excited about the new book. Um, so endophytes, that's another way. Uh, flip on the endo, uh, epifluorescence and you see those endophytes. At epifluorescence again, you see in the le leaves the leaf surface that when you have your stomata protected by fungi, they're they're in fortress, just like you know traditionally how Elaine Ingham talked about you compost tea leaves and everything. You're gonna wanna do specific microbes in the future. When you learn what's possible, you're going to be triggering, growing, preparing very specific microbes at very specific times. And you're going to be protecting your plants and fortressing them, triggering them, strengthening them all at specific moments. Um, and we're going to get the highest levels of expression out of them that way. And, and this makes sense um, when you look at the nitrogen cycle and you see that you no know, endophytic fixation in the leaves is happening of nitrogen. Uh, this is something that, you know, uh, Dr. James White has been studying and, and, and proving out that all plants have nitrogen fixing bacteria and fungi in their trichomes, which are just plant hairs. But there's more. <laughs> All right, so the rhizophagy cycle, this may be the main reason why we should compost. <clears throat> so we know that the exudates at the root tip go out there, they feed the bacteria and fungi, they reproduce. We know that. But did you know that there are cells being drawn in through the meristem cells? Yes, and once inside, they're bombarded with a form of oxygen. I know, oxygen. I thought I loved you. <laughs> oxygen then strips the cell, superoxide specifically, strips the, the cell wall off of the, um, the bacteria or fungi, and they leak electrolytes and nutrients, and they often just are, are, are destroyed and completely feasted upon by the plant root. And then they the ones that survive this process that are not endophytes 
they actually are forced out through root hairs, repopulate uh, on the outside of the root hair, and they re as they reform. And it's not clear perfectly like where and when they're reforming. They're, they're reforming their um, their walls in the root hair to a degree, and then all, even more outside. But they're reforming their entire walls. So these are like, for some of these, it's like they're sheep getting sheared. For some of these, they're getting harvested. And for some of these, they're endophytes. Okay, and we'll get into this. So if you didn't know, this is primary because the plant roots do this immediately when they, all, all, out of all seeds, they, they start doing rhizophagy and they don't need the other levels of nematodes or protozoa. So that this is the easiest, simplest, first primary foundational feeding mechanism that mycorrhizal fungi hijacks, that um, rhizobia hijacks. Like uh, this is the way that plants primarily feed. And this is why mm, compost teas and compost extracts are so great. And that's why everyone says, do them on the drip line where the new roots are where the feeding root tips are, in other words, okay? They reabsorb 90% of the exudates that they put out. So the whole idea that they're just putting them out and then there's a cycle happening outside the roots and then they're just harvesting the benefit of that, that's not, not what's going on. They're drawing them all in through their exudation that they release. It's not cakes and cookies as much as it is Hansel and Gretel, right? <laughs> and then with, with the, when we look at endophytes, they're actually playing an exchange, a fast exchange game. And so they're, they're releasing ethylene and they're releasing nitric oxide. And what's that, what that is, I mean, it looks like this. This is what it really looks like. Let's look at it up close. You guys see that? Do you guys see the bacteria crowded in that root hair? There's a root hair. This one's not so swollen. The next one's going to be more swollen. Are you ready for it? Here we go. Here we go. Swollen. See how it's swollen? It's like, ah, it's like a balloon. So, and you can see how the pores are leaking bacteria. See how filled this one is? Guys, you see this? This is how easy it is to prove out the things I'm teaching you for yourself. You can go see this stuff. And that's why, you know, I do so much research. Sometimes it take thing, my things take longer than I expect. Um, <laughs> sometimes I go too hard and make myself sick. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but plants are active, passive, and reactive. People want to paint them as these react, like like these active deciders of their fate. That'd be great if that was true, but um, you can't turn off the sun. They're gonna just they're passive. They're gonna take that energy and they're gonna create sugars. If they don't create the sugars at, at properly. They have simple sugars and not complex car, you know, carbohydrates. And those simple sugars, it's monosaccharides, not polysaccharides, I should say. Um, those monosaccharides are going to attract pests. And then they build up and they start leaking those simple sugars. And then they get the suckers and then doom, done. So they're active, passive, and reactive. And unless you're examining them through these lenses, you won't see your plants. You'll miss something. All right, let's get into it. So microbes are being digested, stripped and restored, forced to fix nitrogen, partnered with and beneficially coexisted with all at the same time. So much of, of what the confusion is, is that there's excretions and secretions and there's sloughed off organic matter, dead cells from the roots. So you get saprophytes feeding off of that. And those saprophytes, most likely plants evolved to s absorb those into rhizophagy. Um, 
and 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 that would make sense um that our our saprophytic bacteria and fungi from a compost then would feed so well into rhizophagy fantastic stuff and and that's the things when you understand their perspective you have these like all these breakthroughs in your practice and and how you work with plants plants rely upon biology for their immune systems the highest levels of plant health are all dependent levels three and four are all dependent upon as John says vigorous microbiology, but we're going to get into specifically which biology here today. And in plants, you know, they're in the roots. Um, people know that, but they're also in the phloem. And that's what that looks like. That's fungi. That's their epifluorescence again. More of that. Um, it hasn't reached the phloem and xylem. Um, we are relying upon plants. We are all reliant upon microbes in our digestion. I just want to remind you of that. I'm going to continuously remind you of that throughout the presentation. Because I want you to want to partner with biology because it, it's inside you. It's your digestion. It's, but it's also when it's optimized, it's your optimal health. So much of the microbiology and the symbiosis in our stomach or gut biome is our happiness, is our feel good. And I want your soil to be in that feel good zone. I want your food to be in that feel good zone. And I want you to be in that feel good zone. And it really takes partnering with biology. Many of us started eating local foods in the past 20 years. And part of the feedback loop, if you tuned in last time with biohacking, is partnering with the biology of the local bioregions so that we're tapped in energetically, we're tapped in biologically, we are in a feedback loop. Regenerative soil is the breakthrough that farmers and gardeners all over the world are using to unlock the full potential of their plants and soils. Universities are doubling their yields. Farmers are increasing their water holding capacity by thousands of gallons of water per acre per year. Gardeners are seeing pest pressure disappear and evaporate. The most challenging aspects of growing food are being addressed by focusing on the linchpin to all life, the soil. If we can get our soil right, we can grow amazing food, raise amazing animals and overcome all of these challenges. We skip the pests, the diseases, the viruses, and soil damage. We instead focus on making things better and better. So our food, yields, and nutrition continue to improve exponentially with every single season. Learn to understand soil from the micro to the macro, down to the individual microbes, ions, and enzymes, and how they directly relate to hands-on action and pragmatic strategies for our farms, fields, and gardens. We can grow food faster with higher yields and nutritional density, but it all comes down and comes back to your soil. Is it resilient? Is it regenerative? Join us and change the way you see the world, food, soils, and everything and how it relates. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And click that link. Join us this season. Don't miss out.